Hey, church family, thanks again uh, for joining us for our daily connection video. Man, it is the middle of the week, right in the middle of Wednesday. I hope that you've been enjoying walking through Ecclesiastes with Brother Brent and I. We are going to jump right back in, looking at God's purpose for our life and, and really understanding God's today, understanding how God's design uh, plays a part in his purpose for our life. So if you want to go ahead, open up your Bibles if you have them with you. I know that the, the passage will also be on the screen, but open up your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Today we're going to be looking at verses 11 through 13. So uh, Ecclesiastes 3 verses 11 through 13, it reads, He has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also put eternity in their hearts, but no one can discover the work God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and enjoy the good life. It is also the gift of God whenever anyone eats, drinks, and enjoys all his efforts. Now, I want us to break this into kind of two different sections, okay? The first one is verses 11 and 12. So I'm going to read through them again one more time. He says, He has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also put eternity in their hearts, but no one can discover the work God has done from beginning to end. I know that there's nothing better for them than to rejoice and enjoy the good life. I think there are times when, when we look at the world and we think that it's just chaos and everything is falling apart. But there's something we need to recognize. Uh, the sun continues to rise, right, and continues to fall. The earth is still rotating around it, the orbit of the sun and spinning on its axis as it does that. The moon is still coming into the sky just the way it is supposed to. While sometimes the weather isn't the way we like it, and it can even be catastrophic at times, the reality is the entire world is not breaking off into chaos. For the most part, if you plant a seed and you take care of it, it will grow, right? Uh, the world, even whenever it looks like there is chaos, there actually is quite a bit of order. And that order comes from one place, one place alone, and that is the Lord. The Lord has has put those the, the world into place in the way that he wants it to be and there is order to the world that we live in it, it has all happened at its appropriate time and so uh, the writer here he's talking about these workers and what do they gain through their struggles right and so he's trying to explain to man there's order to this world so they gain getting to live within that order we don't have to look and think that everything's out of control the reality is our god is in control and, and when we begin to realize right it's not our job Right? It's not our job to hold everything into place. That was never our purpose. Because we're not possible, it's not possible for us to do that. We are not God. We realize that He alone is able to hold all things. It says that He holds all things together, right? That that in Christ all things were made in Him, for Him, and in Him all things are held together. When we realize that it's in God that all things are held together, there's a peace that can come. And I think that that peace is a little bit of what he's talking about here when he talks about uh that that I know that there's nothing better for them than to rejoice and enjoy the good life. Uh, the good life is not out partying anytime they want to or, or having a ton of stuff. No, the good life is resting in, in the strength of the Lord. Having peace and knowing he's in control, that doesn't mean that everything is perfect. No, but it means that everything is the way that he has designed it to be, right? With the exception of, of the effects of sin, God is still in control. He's always been in control. When we live with that understanding, trusting Him with every part of, 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 our, of our lives, even though we don't understand, even says no one can understand, right, from beginning to end, all that God has done. Even when we can't understand, when we trust Him with our lives, man, we are living the good life at that point. The first thing I want us to understand, we're looking at our purpose in God. Our purpose is to understand that He is in control and the more we rest and have faith that he is in control, the more of a good life that we're going to live. And then that, that last verse, verse 13 says, It is also the gift of God whenever anyone eats, drinks, and enjoys all his efforts. Can, can I just tell you, man, I, I was I was scrolling through through Facebook the other day, and um, I, I've kind of, one of our students is calling me a space nerd, because I've kind of been watching uh, the, the rover that's, that's on Mars right now, and and it's really fascinating to me to look and and see that planet with you know high definition photos and whatnot. It, it's it's fascinating that there's an, another planet out there that that looks similar to Earth. But can I just tell you, no matter how much you compare those pictures, it, it's not the same place. Mars is desolate. I mean, you can't live there. Uh, there's no oxygen out there, not enough to sustain us. 
And when you look at pictures of our earth with its with its mountains and its and beautiful mountains and, and, and water and bo different bodies of water, its greenery, it, man, our earth is gorgeous. What the Lord has created is beautiful. And not only that, he's given us great food to eat, right? Man, I, I love, I love turnip greens. God gave us turnip greens. I love them. They're amazing, right? I, I love Diet Coke. I, I don't know if I can say that God gave us Diet Coke. He gave us the things that make Diet Coke, but I love it, and it's there, and we're able to enjoy these things. I think the, the key, though, is understanding where those things come from. They are a gift from God. Uh, there's a prayer that, that I, I'll often pray when I sit down to eat, and it's not a, I've had people tell me, well, you're just trying to make us feel bad. And it's genuinely, it's not a desire to make people feel bad. It's a desire for me to have a right understanding of, of the gifts that God has given me. And I'll often pray, hey, Lord, thank you for this food. I know there are people all over the world today who will not eat, and I'm able to have this meal. And I know it's a gift from you. And that's the reality. The reality is we are able to eat, right? We have a house over our head. Right? We have education that is free and easy for us to attain. We have uh, you know, good food, good, good drink, uh, good opportunities to spend time with one another. And all of this is a gift from God. So we need to approach it as if it's a gift from God, understanding that he has offered this to us, not just for our enjoyment, but that through our enjoyment, we would give glory to him. So just a couple of questions I want, I want you to work through. The first uh, question I want you to work through, do you regularly live your life as if God is in control, right? Are you living the good life by trusting that he is in control in all of the chaos? And the second question I would ask is more of a, more of a statement, more of, a, more of a, a, a direction to give you today. Take time today to be sure that you give thanks for every gift that God has given you under the sun. Everything that he's given you is a gift. Be sure that you give him thanks, that you understand where those things come from. Church family, as you are working through those things today, I want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you.